We are here in central London for the Crypto Challenge Forum. I am moderating a panel. I love moderating panels because I love a good debate. The panel is on blockchain and real estate. I don't know that much about real estate, but I do know a few things about blockchain. So as my boy Charles Story would say, I got to bounce and get right down to business. Okay, thank you all very much for coming and uh, what an amazing two days it's been. Um, being here right till the end, you are the hardcore, you are the chosen few, you are the people that show determination to the end. So I absolutely love that. Round of applause. Uh, we only have 15 minutes, so let's get right down to business. My name is Shane Kehoe. I am the co-founder of SVK Crypto. Uh, we are a fund based here in London, but it's not about me. It is about our panel. So why don't we get them to introduce themselves? Let's kick it right off. My name is Steve. Uh, I'm CEO of Lysium Partners, tokenized real estate fund. We invest in commercial property in New York, and we use the blockchain to enhance the liquidity offered to investors because our token is a share in our fund. Matthew Margetz, Quantum RE. We're an American property fund. We invest in American residential real estate. We allow the homeowner to sell a fraction of their home, up to 30%, and the retail public can then buy fractional uh, tokenized security. We are regulated and we have patents pending on our tech. Nice. My name's Kai. I founded the company called HIP, HIP Interactive Property. We're four years in the making, we're FCA regulated. We actually rewrote the permissions with the FCA so we can trade debt and equity on a contract, which is a prequel to a smart contract. Uh, as far as I know, we're the only company that have those permissions. Um, uh, we run a interactive debt and equity marketplace, which allows any property type to be published to an exchange and the owner to decide how much, just like you would list a uh, a building on a stock market, how much equity can be sold and how much debt can be raised against it. It's the owner's choice. Interactive means that the debt and equity behave together. So equity is a currency in our model. Um, we were about to do an ICO token raise in July. The market went flat. We're about to uh, officially launch our token raise in probably three or four weeks. Uh, there'll be an announcement on that. Uh, we've signed to Thailand in a commercial uh, our first license deal, and we're rolling out in the UK as well. Those pilots will be live in March next year with about 200 million pounds worth of assets. Right, so let's get down to business. Thank you all very much for that wonderful introduction. So we're really looking at the distributed nature of blockchain with regards to real estate. What areas of real estate do you see blockchain having the biggest impact? Most likely fractional ownership. Um, one of the big um, barriers to entry to real estate investment is the large amount that's required for that, right? And uh, with blockchain, it's possible to basically tokenize a property or a portfolio of properties, and it's also possible to give access to this um, particular opportunity to a wider investor base. And by tokenizing an asset that could be, could be worth a few million dollars, and by pricing each unit at one dollar, for example, it's possible to allow small investors to access this, this uh, product. Um, also brings more liquidity, et cetera. Matthew. Uh, I would agree uh, entirely. Uh, fractional ownership uh, encourages uh, um, investors to come into the sector uh, within the residential space. It's an antidote to equity release or debt. Uh, effectively, they're able to uh, realize uh, their capital. Um, and I think that uh, moving forward, uh, the actual fractionized piece will also provide business opportunities in the residential space for brokers and other parties to come in as valuation agents. Okay, same question to you. What areas of real estate do you see blockchain having the biggest impact? The, the, I've been in blockchain since 2013, I'm a Bitcoin casino, I've followed this space for a while. My adoption of uh, blockchain um, is purely around trust. Um, we work on fear and uh, crypto investment scenarios, which means you can be either or. The point of the matter is that when 
uh, a trade is made, uh, you basically need a record of that trade. So uh, an investor in Japan putting money into a property in the UK, he could see that there is a ledger of only a million shares in that building, which might be priced by the house price index or, or graded in a certain, certain way. But when he acquires that, um, and he acquires it through a smart contract, and he moves his money digitally, he's saved on the transfer of cash, and he can trust beyond the nature of our company HIP, that that, that, that uh, investment scenario is safe. So there are two sort of straightforward fundamental uses of blockchain. It's a mutable register of your, your, your investment scenario. If HIP switches off, they can use that contract to retrieve their debt, or a receiver, official receiver can do that. Um, and the movement of money, because it's uh, property and it will get into the billions, can be done at a fraction of the cost that you would transferring through a bank, and it's immediate. So we, we go back to its basic uh, principles to use it in our model. Matthew, with regards to fractional ownership, what are the challenges facing the adoption of fractional ownership? Well, what are the challenges in order for that to be adopted and to be used? Um, well, if I was to put my marketing hat on, it's a challenge, it's an opportunity. Um, you can encourage people to own property in Bel Air. You can encourage people to own you know, bits of Beverly Hills. Um, the truth of the matter is, um, fractional ownership needs to be understood in terms of, and, and there was a panel earlier in terms of the legal discussion, what are your rights of ownership? Those need to be explained, those T's and C's need to be there. But actually, I think, uh, again, this panel was, you know, one of the questions was, you know, whether blockchain will transform the industry. I just think it, technology enables the industry to move, and I think the barrier to adoption is the appetite of the investor public to look at these new asset classes and feel comfortable investing in them. It is a case of trust. David, but I think real estate is easier because it's a tangible asset. Understood. David, do you think that there is a responsibility for someone like yourself to be out there educating and discussing fractional ownership in order to get that level of comfort that Matthew was talking about? Yes. David. Steve. Steve. <laughs> <laughs> um, for fractional ownership, I, th I believe that uh, one of the main, um, let's say, one of the main issues is really people to understand what they can get with it. Because now you, 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 we can all say, okay, fractional ownership in real estate is great, but what, what I'm going to do if I hold 1% or 0.1% of property? I can't do anything with that, right? right? So it's very important for everyone to still understand that <clears throat> as of today, and uh, because the governments, most governments, uh, there's a few countries that are a bit far ahead, but most of them have not uh, written, for example, their deeds and their uh, property rights into a, into a blockchain, right? Um, it's still at a private level that the fractional ownership can happen. And um, from my perspective, the main um, way to use it and to put it in place and in practice today is to, fract to offer fractional ownership of a portfolio of properties. And investors, or actually token holders, can get fractional ownership rights on that portfolio. And what does that mean? It means that the portfolio needs to be managed by an investment manager. And this is what firms like, like ours do, basically. Yeah. What are the main benefits that blockchain technology can bring to the real estate industry? Uh, transparency, really. I mean, it's, um, I, I use a blockchain um, when it comes to the product as a very hidden uh, uh, technology because uh, adopt real estate is uh, uh, it's a very complex industry, which is why it's taking us so long to work out how to, to achieve it. And, and if you go to the market with a concept um, which is about fractional ownership, that itself is a challenge. So you don't want to bombard them with, with blockchain technology and all these things as well. It, it hides in the background, right? The front of the house of the product means that somebody can, can, uh, can view their property in parts rather than the whole, um, and underneath that, the, the technology which allows this to happen efficiently uh, and effectively is blockchain. So you'd only know about it as a customer if you drilled into it, as far as our product's concerned. We don't talk about that to, to, for mass market adoption. Understood. And Matthew, what are the main benefits that blockchain technology can bring to the real estate? Well, industry? I mean, the, uh, the, uh, the real estate industry is broken down, obviously, for homeowners, buyers, institutions, investors, REITs, what have you. And each component can benefit uh, in as so far as, as a fund. We can match and record 
instances of purchase um, relatively cheaply because the processing power is there, the um, nature of blockchain is immutable. I think, as I alluded to earlier, estate agents, at the moment they have an outcome event with a client where you buy and sell a house. Theoretically, you would be able to increase their scope of business to include buying and selling a share of a house. So just in that point, you get an extension of business hours and business opportunities. Um, homeowners, if you rent, or rather if you own a second home, um, you would be able to realize value within that without taking on debt, so on and so forth. It cascades down. The blockchain enables a record to be kept uh, at a relatively cheap price. And Stephen, how difficult will it be for existing businesses to make the switch over to blockchain or have a certain proportion of their business on the blockchain? So I think, I believe that there are two ways to do it. Um, <clears throat> first, first way, an investor can do it just in investing into a blockchain firm or a blockchain real estate business or acquiring some other, some other ventures. But uh, to be specific to the real estate part of it, if um, a large broker um, or an investment firm wanted to get into the blockchain and to tokenize, to tokenize some of their portfolio, for example, they can certainly do it with a few firms that have some experience, but if they want to develop the skill in-house, it's still quite difficult in terms of legal skills. Um, it's, it's not easy to, to attach the link of property rights to a token. It's very difficult, actually, and uh, depending on the jurisdiction, if you are in the US, not in the US, if you want to allow non-US investors to invest in US real estate with wilderness taxes, etc., it's very, it's very complex. So I think it will take, it will take some time. For mass adoption. Um, Matthew, also the same question for you. How difficult will it be for existing businesses to have a proportion of their business uh, adopting blockchain technology? Well, as a case in point, Quantum RE started life as a conventional real estate fund, but we were helping people realize equity in their home by selling it on. The blockchain has enabled us to scale at a faster rate. All of the things that we do as a fund anyway are subject to governance and regulation. So in, in fact, our biggest impediment has been to meet, as you alluded to earlier, the regulatory requirements. The biggest hurdle, perhaps, potentially, will keep the balance of property for sale with the investing public going um, in even balance, or in fact, asymmetry. Kai, um, with regards to your vision going forward, um, because it really feels like we're in the early, early stages. It feels like when, when I speak to our investors that we're in 1992, 1993, almost pre-Netscape days when we're looking mm -hmm. at blockchain technology, but it's moving fast. Mm -hmm. And for me being a macro view, I'm always looking at what's the potential. Yeah. Um, can you give me your view in the next five to 10 years of how your industry will change and what it will currently look like with regards to the adoption process with regards to blockchain technology? Uh, well, you know, I, we, we specifically built our product um, as, like a, as like a ball of energy, which allows people to come in like the investor pools and the property owners. Once they're on the platform, they are intrinsically using blockchain as a technology by default of using the platform. So, so to use the technology, you're literally a user. So you don't have to go through what we've had to go through to construct it. Um, in what, what's happening in the landscape is obviously utilities are there now. We find that beautiful way to create um, some virality around the product, but you can't pin it to the asset class. You know, all the guys sat in the room here with regulatory issues. Um, if you try and derive returns from this, you, you are, you're an SEO, you're, you're a security, right? So it's a whole different regulatory matter, which is all right for our FCA licenses. But the, the progression will go, you know, for our, the challenge we have is liquidity. So if, even if you had a billion or a you know, trillion pounds worth of orders, you need liquidity. Liquidity comes from institutional investors, and institutional investors are not interested in utility tokens. So the next wind is, is security token. Um, and that brings you one, one step closer to a dynamic stock market offering. Um, and, 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 and we are designing our platform specifically to follow those iterations so that you know, as we get more orders and more customers and more people want to, 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 to share the wealth in, in their assets, and that could be a property or anything, um, the institutional money can meet that request through a regulated format because it's unlike all the other crypto companies which sit outside of touching land-based assets 
they can live in this ether um, and provide services that aren't regulated. We're sat here with monstrous problems of bringing, you know, Dickensian models into a modern landscape, yeah. and um, it presents a lot of challenges. So the regulation side of it is something that you, you, as part of the business practice, you always have to be on top of, and that's why <clears throat> we 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 are regular contact with the FCA. We have FCA advisors in house. We have um, we've met the government. We've met the treasury. We've spoken to them about the concept. You know, it's important that these people are close to us because if this technology is going to be adopted, we need them to adopt it as well. Matthew, so, five-year view, five, ten-year view, what's it looking like? I used to work for Microsoft, and many years ago, I was flogging cloud to people who didn't care, didn't want to know about it, <laughs> didn't give a shit, or, uh, you know, banks on-prem don't want cloud. And now my kids store their photos on the cloud and talk about the cloud. I think blockchain will go in the same evolution. People will move beyond the barriers, and you look at what IBM are doing on private chains and bits and pieces, and everyone will start to use it. In the real estate market, it is a way of monitoring and managing asset flow. Simple. And Stephen, your, your five to ten year view on how this space will look. I really, I really believe that uh, tokenized securities will replace uh, traditional securities, because at the end of the day, they are both digital, uh, they are just more uh, efficient, um, bring more transparency and uh, actually are very easy and easier to work with in terms of compliance and I also believe that will make the work of the regulators easier. Well, I think we have some challenges, uh, but I would like to thank my panel all for some expert answers. Thank you very much for being involved. Certainly for me, as I look at the space, the writing's on the wall. I couldn't be more excited. Um, it's going to be a wonderful journey, and uh, we, are, we are in a wonderful time uh, to be investing and to change the world. So thank you all Beautiful. very much, and thank you all very much for that. Thank you, okay. Shane, for a terrific panel. Thanks much appreciated. Thank you very ah. much.